This isn't going to be a Vosh or Destiny rebuttal. I want to be constructive for once, offer some assistance to their debate rather than just criticize them. At the same time, I want to criticize some bad habits that the right wing has developed. Recently talking to Destiny, Vosh provided his views on truth. Destiny had previously made allegations that certain bread tubers were lying. Vosh defended said bread tubers. He then said Destiny shouldn't criticize the left if it hurts their cause. At the same time, some lying was okay so long as it helped the cause. There are a lot of people in chat painting right now, like, why does the truth matter? Whether or not two different interpretations or two different versions of a story meaningfully affect political discourse around that story is a valid question. One of the issues that I have with your content, Destiny, is sometimes it feels like you sacrifice political efficacy for the image of correctness, even if that line between technical correctness and rhetorically or um, politically efficacious, but somewhat misleading uh, is ultimately meaningless. That's because my goal isn't to get an audience of 20,000 brain dead lefties that all just want to hear me circle jerk the popular lefty take of the news. My I want to be able to reach. I want to be able to reach. In evaluating whether something's true or not, Vosh first determines whether it benefits socialism or not. If it does, it's true. If it doesn't, it's not true. Now let's steel man Vosh's argument a little bit. Vosh would probably say that even if an individual lie helps socialism, it probably hurts them if they lie constantly. Also, some lies may help in the short term, but hurt the cause in the long term. This would be the case with lying about very consequential things, or when the lie is obvious. Therefore, Vosh would take the position that leftists should try to avoid lying often or when it's important. That being said, his bottom line position is some lies are fine if they help socialism. Now, if you want to see Vosh get dressed down for taking this position, just watch the Destiny video, or the week's worth of follow-up videos Destiny published after the fact. Like I said, I'm not here to dunk on Vosh, not this time. Instead, I want to give you my views on epistemology from the perspective of a conservative. Then I want to talk about truth issues and non-issues with the right wing. Epistemology is the branch of philosophy dealing with knowledge. It asks the question, what can be known about the world? What is and isn't true? Before I move on, let's talk about descriptive and normative claims. A descriptive claim is one that describes how something is. My car is white. It's hot outside. I hear birds chirping. A normative claim is what one ought to do. You should volunteer. Cheating is wrong. We need to stop climate change. Change. Now, most people, Destiny included, believe epistemology is descriptive. We know things based on facts we know about the world. However, I actually kind of agree more with Vosh, not on consequentialism, but on his view that epistemic claims are actually normative. How do I explain that epistemology is normative? Step one, I've got to show why it's stupid to believe in descriptive epistemic claims. Bertrand Russell will tell you that all knowledge comes from sense data, things we taste, touch, smell, see, and hear. These pieces of sense data are the building blocks of our knowledge. Thus, we can know things in one of two ways. One is by experiencing it ourselves firsthand through our own sense data. Secondly, we can have it described to us by someone else who experienced it. Here's why Bertrand Russell is wrong. He assumes data is truthful. Take a claim like ripe strawberries are red. Are they? To most people, yes. Not colorblind people, though. There are some women who can see other colors, colors that most women and no men have ever seen. They evolve this ability as hunter-gatherers where women would do the gathering. Seeing the extra colors help these women avoid picking poisonous berries. There are also animals that can see a wider spectrum of colors than humans can. Does that mean they have superior color vision? Or do humans not see the extra colors because it would be pointless or perhaps even detrimental to our own survival? We experience the world in a way that helps us survive and reproduce. That's how evolution works. Things that are true about the world are likely hidden from us by evolution. That's because if we knew about them, it would interfere with our survival or reproduction. That's why I've said before on this channel that some science is more useful than other science. Physics and chemistry can produce reliable results. Meanwhile, when it comes to biology, we still don't even know why people need to sleep. When you finally get to social science, just forget about it. In fact, the entire world might just be entirely fake. Our entire life experience could be that of an operating system, one that we evolved. Imagine you lived on a Windows desktop. You could maybe discover things about how to open certain files. You could navigate through the data on the computer. Maybe you could build a music player that could play a music file. What you would never be able to figure out, though, is that you're just a program running on a hard drive. Oh, but atheists are so smart, friends, because science. So no, I don't take descriptive epistemic claims seriously. We can't know any truths about the world. That's because we don't experience the world as it actually is. So what, nihilism then? No. We may not get to see the world as it is. We do get to experience a human life, though, even if that life might be mostly fake. We ought, therefore, to see epistemology as normative. So what does normative 
epistemology look like? Well, I can give information or I can receive information. If I'm going to give information to people, how ought I go about doing it? I should probably provide them useful information that is reliable and true. I should give them the right amount of information, not leave important things out. At the same time, I don't want to bury good information in pointless detail. Also, it helps if I can deliver the information in a clear and entertaining way. What ought I not do when providing information? I shouldn't lie to people or exaggerate. I shouldn't give them unreliable or useless information. What about the person receiving it? Well, they should be listening to it. They should compartmentalize what's important. They should be checking for aspects of the information that suggests it's unreliable or in need of further verification. You shouldn't just immediately believe everything from every source. If you receive information that sounds incorrect, you should let the person giving it to you know if possible. So how can we know if purely descriptive claims are true or not? If the information comes from someone who gives and receives information virtuously, you ought to believe it. If the person doesn't, you ought to be skeptical. Let's say someone tells you something that conflicts with something you heard earlier. What claim ought you believe? Well, again, you've got to evaluate the different sources of information. The process I am describing is called virtue epistemology. Let me make clear that virtue epistemology isn't like Vosch's consequentialism. I'm not saying you should take your ethical and political beliefs and apply them to how you process information. For example, saying something like, I ought to believe this is true because it helps socialism. Instead, what I'm saying is that you ought to believe descriptive things are true or false based off how virtuously the source processes information. For example, the mainstream media, including Fox News, has said for four years that Donald Trump held water for racists at Charlottesville, the very fine people hoax. Yet we all know that isn't accurate. Trump specifically said he wasn't talking about the white supremacy. Yet the media omits this because it supports their agenda too. It's a small lie, so that makes it okay. Destiny made a big deal about Vosh's consequentialism, like he was some sort of lunatic for advocating for that. Yet the media has, for a while now, reported information with consequentialism in mind. That's the whole idea of journalists as activists. Of course, virtue epistemology would say you therefore ought to be skeptical of whatever the media reports. So let's talk about the right. If you read that the Pope was arrested on a website called the conservative beaver maybe hold off on sharing that wait until it at least makes it on the newsmax or something don't just believe what you're told because it's what you want to be true i don't like criticizing the right i need to be honest though we're not doing our best in this regard Election time. The left narrative is that the right believed what they wanted to believe, that we're the ones who weren't acting virtuously in regards to information. The media and the courts rejected this stuff, so therefore it must be a baseless conspiracy. I already demonstrated through the very fine people hoax that the media is okay with small lies. It's okay if it hurts Trump, just like Vosh said. So did the media process information virtuously in regard to the election fraud? No, they ignored all coverage of it. They didn't investigate, follow up, or try and de bunk any of the claims. They just ignored it. What about the courts? Did they conduct hearings? Did they allow evidence to be presented? No, no, they didn't. They dismissed the cases procedurally. Most of the lawsuits were lost when the courts set the response date after January 6. I recently watched Stephen Crowder interview Alex Jones. Crowder was trying to hint at the fact that he uh, lacked confidence in the process. Alex Jones responded saying the issue is that evidence wasn't allowed to come out, which Crowder agreed with. Uh, what? The information did come out. Receipts were shown. Receipts that aren't going to be brainwashed out of the minds of so many people. Because uh, I know that you said there was no evidence, which sort of surprised me. And I'm not saying it affected the outcome of the election. But do you think that Well, they never was... allowed the evidence to come out. That's my, yeah. Come on, man. What are we talking about? You guys all know my views on the election. I'm not going to repeat it. What I will tell you is that there were these big public hearings. Receipts were shown at these hearings. I put 29 hours of those receipts on this channel. I know YouTube recently shaved that down to 25. I could easily do another 40 hours if I wanted to. I read many of the affidavits. I watched the videos. I looked through the New York Times Edison data. I've read the lawsuits. I've read Matt Brainerd's report. I feel like I did a pretty good job processing the information, and I stand by what I've said. That being said, there were a few things that weren't supported by receipts. Even with all the stuff I looked into, I didn't see any proof whatsoever of these things. So let's go over them. Did a foreign government interfere in the election? I've seen no evidence. Did Trump actually win in a huge landslide where he got over 400 electoral votes? Zero proof. Was Smartmatic involved in any way in any sort of election fraud? I've seen no receipts. Was a server raided in Germany that had the real election data? No receipts have been provided for that. 
So yeah, those claims you ought not to believe. Notice that's a pretty small list. Let's circle back and talk about the right. There were tons of people saying that there was going to be an op by Trump. In the next few days, the military was going to get involved. Justice would finally be done. Sure, some people qualified that. They said they were speculating based off viewpoints from history books they read. I believe that was Vox Day's take, so I'll give him a pass. But there were a lot of people popular on the right who weren't qualifying these things. They were saying they had inside info, that it would happen in the next few days. It was all lies. Now it's time to hold myself up to my own standards. Am I perfect? No. I've given some takes that turned out to be wrong. George Floyd, for example, I said I believed it was a premeditated murder being disguised as a botched arrest. That's because the only evidence early on was a selectively edited video clip that did in fact make it look like a premeditated murder. When we got that actual transcript, it was clear it wasn't a murder at all. I mean, maybe it's a manslaughter. So yeah, I clarified it later on. I try not only to always check receipts, but to show them to you on the screen. When leftists cite a study, I read the study. Half the time, it doesn't say what they say it does. Now, sometimes I do make claims that are more philosophical or moral in nature, like saying the U.S. election is an extension of the narrative put forth in the book Revolt of the Elites. Yeah, I don't have a source that's going to say that's true, yet I am presenting you an idea by a renowned social critic and author. I then apply the idea to the contemporary context. So cut me some slack. I try to do my best. In addition, I try be a good receiver of information. I don't just simply consume right-wing media. I listen to these lefties. That's why I do these response videos. I could just read the news to you in a right-wing slam, but there's lots of other people who do that. I think it's worthwhile going directly to the other side, listening to their arguments, and then checking whether or not they're true. Now, I'm not going to tell you that the truth is always going to be in the center. That's a dumb way of looking at politics. What I am saying is that to virtuously process information, you need to get as much information as possible. Anyways, for those of you without your own theory of epistemology, I recommend virtue epistemology. Another thing that's good about it is it can provide truth value to opinions. Let's say I tell you that I played Fallout 76 and it was a god-awful mess of a game. As a descriptive epistemic claim, this is really hard to verify if true or not. But assuming you believe I process information virtually, you can rely on this claim being true. Anyways, please support small YouTube channels like mine by subscribing. Thanks. Also, check me out on Gab. <laughs>